2004's Saw was a career-making movie for many people. Whether their roles were large or small, many of the actors in this little horror movie that could either had or went on to have surprising careers. We want to play a game called What Happened to the Cast of Saw? Cary Elwes is probably best remembered for his dashing and deadpan performance in The Princess Bride, but he's also played a lot of jerkish, self-centered foils, as in Twister, and creepy antagonists, as in Kiss the Girls. Saw split the difference, casting him as the selfish, jaded Dr. Gordon, who has to spin the film growing into someone viewers will root for. Lawrence gets put through the ringer, and his suffering and character growth gives Elwes the chance to deliver a juicy and intense performance. You can call it over the top, and plenty of critics did, but Elwes sells it. Uh, I've done it! <laughs> now show them to me! So what's he been doing since then? For starters, he returned to the franchise in Saw 3D, another Jigsaw victim who converted to the killer's philosophy. Outside of that, he's worked steadily, usually releasing a handful of films each year. With appearances in 2019's Black Christmas remake, Stranger Things Season 3, and the acclaimed Ghost Light, he seems to have found a new home in horror, which tends to be loyal to its favorite stars. Best of all, he also landed a role in Mission Impossible 7, bringing him into one of the most solidly entertaining franchises around. Saw co-creator Lee Winnell's acerbic, vulnerable Adam is a key part of what makes the first Saw movie work, but he's arguably even more important as the screenwriter. While Winnell's acting career has stayed small, mostly limited to fun supporting roles in the Insidious franchise, in horror films like The Bye Bye Man, he's become a horror staple as a writer and director. He stayed on with Saw for a while, writing or co-writing the scripts for the second and third movies, and then moved on to the clever supernatural thrills of the Insidious movies. His directorial debut on Insidious Chapter 3 got an uneven reception, but with 2018's sci-fi action film Upgrade, he started knocking it out of the park. With the release of 2020's widely acclaimed The Invisible Man, the sophisticated and pulse-pounding film starring Elizabeth Moss, Wanell officially became one of the most exciting horror directors to watch. Danny Glover needs no introduction. With the Lethal Weapon series and Predator 2 under his belt, plus roles in prestigious films like The Color Purple, Silverado, and The Royal Tenenbaums, he's a household name. With Saw's low budget, it's impressive the film snagged him at all. He plays Tap, a former detective who becomes obsessed with proving that Dr. Lawrence Gordon is the Jigsaw killer. His involvement in the case gives viewers context for Jigsaw's terrifying string of murders, and his investigation further amps up the tension. Glover's life and career have been as busy as ever. He's stayed deeply involved in activism passionately advocating on issues ranging from labor unions to international affairs and civil rights. His filmography since Saw's release has continued to be an impressive blend of critical and commercial successes, artistic risks, and guaranteed crowd-pleasers. Basically, Danny Glover can do anything, and he's proved it by doing everything, in some jam-packed and incredibly successful years. Ken Leung's doomed detective Stephen Singh might meet a bad but undeniably memorable fate in Saw, but Ken Leung has luckily done much, much better in life. He was a little bit of a name before Saw, especially given his villainous turn in Rush Hour, but he found some of his most notable career successes after Detective Singh died in a shotgun trap. In particular, he attracted a lot of attention for a memorable guest-starring spot on The Sopranos, that the Washington Post pegs as being one of the turning points in his career. He went on to play series regular Miles on Lost, a fan-favorite character from the back half of the show's run that many viewers wish they'd gotten to see more of. Leung also had recurring roles on The Blacklist and Zero Hour, and was a series lead on medical drama The Night Shift. His film work hasn't been quite as high profile, but it's still been impressive, with roles in Star Wars The Force Awakens, Spike Lee's heist thriller Inside Man, and Noah Baumbach's The Squid and the Whale. Dina Meyer has been a familiar face to genre fans for years, appearing in everything from the satiric Starship Troopers to Star Trek Nemesis. 
She was even a series lead in 2002's Birds of Prey. Playing a hard-boiled detective in Saw probably seemed like a natural move for her career. The film wound up doing a lot for her. For one thing, she would go on to become a major part of the franchise, appearing in Saw 2 II and 3 and staying a continuing part of the series' lore in 4, 5, and Jigsaw. Aside from the Saw series, most of Meyer's major work has been on TV, with guest spots on almost every show you could think of. NCIS Los Angeles, The Magicians, Criminal Minds, CSI, and more. In the first Saw film, Mike Butters plays Paul, the man who died in Jigsaw's razor wire trap. Paul might meet his grisly fate in the first movie, but Butters still gets flashback appearances in Saw 4 and 5. But he could have had an entirely different fate in the Saw series. As he told Vulture, Originally, the role I was offered was Jigsaw, which, as you know, in the first script, really did not have a whole lot to do. So I kind of said no, which was probably a mistake. It's intriguing to play what if and wonder what Butters could have done with the part. Paul Gutrecht gets one of the worst, hardest to avoid deaths in Saw, having to walk on broken glass holding a candle while smeared in flammable jelly to figure out how to get an antidote for poison that's already in his veins. That's a very rigged game, and it's not surprising Mark loses. Saw was Gutrecht's final movie appearance before he went on to pursue another career as a licensed therapist. But he did have several guest-starring roles on TV. In particular, he was a favorite of showrunner Matt Nix, who used him in Burn Notice, The Good Guys, and Complications. Michael Emerson, who plays fake-out villain and reluctant Jigsaw accomplice Zepp Hendel, wound up having one of the most interesting post-Saw careers of the whole cast. While he appeared in a few more movies, Emerson's strongest work has been on TV where he's found several awesome, intriguing roles that really showcase his talent. Even before Saw, Emerson had an Emmy Award-winning guest star run on the legal drama The Practice, but it was only after Saw that his career really took off. He was cast as Ben Linus on Lost, and the part catapulted him to national recognition. His work as Ben won him another Emmy this time for Outstanding Supporting Actor in a Drama Series. Emerson undeniably made the most of his lost success, going on to star in the thought-provoking sci-fi thriller series Person of Interest, the historical miniseries The Name of the Rose, and the supernatural horror drama Evil, truly a geek icon. Benito Martinez's Brett has one of the safest roles in Saw. He plays Lawrence Gordon's lawyer, and he gets in and out without attracting any of Jigsaw's ire. He even gives solid legal advice. And once Brett escaped, Martinez continued an impressive career that's made him one of TV's low-key MVPs. He was already starring on The Shield, where he played the calculatingly ambitious David Aceveda and he continued in that role until the show ended in 2008. Drawing off his great work there, he's become a kind of sleeper hit on cable shows and some of the darker network dramas, with prominent roles on Sons of Anarchy, House of Cards, American Crime, The Blacklist, How to Get Away with Murder, and 13 Reasons Why. He hasn't worked on as many movies, but he's still been a part of some great projects, including Queen and Slim, Beyond the Lights, and Million Dollar Baby. Shawnee Smith's Amanda is one of the most memorable characters in Saw, even with very limited screen time. Her desperation is vivid, and she's absolutely mesmerizing as someone who has fallen under Jigsaw's spell. The series knew that her character had promise, and that Smith, who had an established acting career, especially on TV, was a good bet. She became a huge part of the franchise, with major roles in Saw 2 II and 3. Game over. <laughs> Her future Saw appearances, especially with her significantly expanded part, helped make Smith into a little bit of a horror name. It led to her hosting the reality show Scream Queens in 2008, where she took young actresses through a competition to win a role in Saw 6. But unlike a lot of Saw actors, she didn't completely redirect her career to horror. With previous work on shows like Becker, she still had one foot in comedy and her most significant post-Saw work has come on the FX sitcom Anger Management. 
As the menaced and terrified daughter in Saw, Mackenzie Vega doesn't necessarily have much to do. But to be fair, she was around 10 when the movie was filmed. In the wake of the film, she went on to grow up and develop as an actor, eventually demonstrating some pretty strong dramatic chops. She really made a splash on the hit CBS show The Good Wife, where she played series regular Grace, the opinionated and independent daughter of lead Alicia Florek. Monica Potter imbues Alison Gordon with a sense of steely poise even though she spends most of the movie fearing for her and her daughter's lives. A few years after Saw, she would play another memorable horror wife and mother, this time in the 2009 remake of The Last House on the Left. Most of Potter's career, however, has been in television. Saw overlapped with her time as a series regular on Boston Legal, where she played lawyer Lori Coulson. After a few years hopping around between intermittent projects, including a regular role on TNT's short-lived Trust Me, she found spectacular success with NBC's Parenthood, which gave her a chance to really shine. Her nuanced performance as Christina Braverman won her a Critics' Choice Award in 2013. Since the show wrapped, she's continued to work in TV, including a lead role on Wisdom of the Crowd. Poor Jeff Ridenour narrowly misses one of the most humiliating deaths in the franchise. Jigsaw uses him as a test subject for a trap. It's not even about him. And the detectives who discover him decide to hang back and see what Jigsaw will do with him before they step in. Not exactly great police work. Ned Bellamy, the actor who played him, has gotten better treatment as he's developed a career as a character actor. As a guest star, he feels like a seamless part of the ensemble on everything from Scrubs to Justified to Treme. And he's had a pleasantly varied movie career, with roles in Django Unchained and Twilight. Alexandra Chun plays Carla, the medical student Lawrence has an ill-advised affair with. After Saw, she went on to have a strong career that's only getting better over time. Her biggest movie role so far has been as the lead in 2013's Innocent Blood, a well-regarded indie thriller. And she's done a lot of TV guest star work, appearing on beloved shows like House, The Event, The Magicians, and Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Recently, she's gotten more substantial recurring roles on both Twitch's semi-interactive Artificial and the Netflix ballet drama Tiny Pretty Things. I want to play a game. Even before Saw, Tobin Bell had built an impressive body of work. He was someone you could spot in everything from Tootsie to Goodfellas, in part because he appreciated any chance to get on set. As he told Movieline, I viewed it as an opportunity to make $150 a day doing something that I cared a great deal about, where I could learn. Saw changed all that, splitting his career into before and after stages. Speaking with the Orlando Sentinel, he called the movie a great blessing, and he starred in multiple Saw sequels, appearing in every installment even after his character's death in Saw 3. Understandably, he's now best known as a horror actor, so he's also appeared in other horror projects, like 12 Feet Deep, Beelzebub, and Shudder's Creepshow. But he still occasionally gets to stretch himself, including with voice work on CW's The Flash. You have no idea what's about to begin. With this role in the franchise wrapping up, He's eager to see if his increased star power can translate to different kinds of roles, ones very far from John Kramer. We hope he'll never leave horror behind completely, but after years of masterfully orchestrating terror for audiences everywhere, he certainly deserves a change of pace. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite horror movies are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.